Hello, I'm Justin Cassio. This is How to Genealogy, video six. And in this one, we're going to talk about how to write biographies. And the way that I'm going to show you how I write a biography is by taking one that I've created in Wikitree, and we're just going to reverse engineer it. Okay, so this is the Wikitree profile that I uh, wrote and maintained for Giuseppe Morello, who was the boss of bosses in New York City. Uh, this is one of the most complete mafia profiles that I maintain on Wikitree. If you give it a once over, you can see that the dates of his life are here. Uh, the profiles for all of his parents and siblings, his wives and his children have all been created. And uh, the bio is broken out into major chapters in his life as a mafioso. Uh, when we get down here to the sources, you can see that I've used a combination of vital records and secondary sources to write this bio. Uh, his major biographer to this point has been Mike Dash, and so I quote him quite a lot. Uh, I don't only cite Dash because of the biographical details that he provides about Morello's life, but also so that other researchers who are using this Wikitree bio here uh, that they will know that I'm matching the vital records to the person that Dash writes about. Uh, these other secondary accounts are doing the same thing when I'm uh, citing Critchley or Warner or the Mafia Wiki page. Uh, I just want us to all know that we're all on the same page here. We're all talking about the same person. And I'm making a case here uh, in this biography for a slightly different version of events than you can read on these other websites. And uh, because I'm adding or changing certain details of Morello's life based on what I found in the vital records. And these don't always appear in these secondary sources that I'm citing. Uh, in this first section, birth and early childhood, I already have a point of disagreement with, with um, Critchley, who wrote about the Morello Terranova family in New York City around this time. He wrote about them in quite a bit of detail. Um, since a lot of Mafia historians were interested in Morello's life, will have read Critchley and Dash. Um, I want to make sure that um, any assertions that they've made that I've been able to um, find evidence against, I want to make sure that any of those discrepancies are being uh, publicized. And really, genealogy is the tool for that work. And a wiki tree page or something like that, a genealogy website, is exactly the sort of a tool that should be used to make corrections to somebody's life, like I'm doing right here with Morello. Uh, so I have some biographical details in Morello's profile that I would put in basically anybody's. Um, for instance, when they're born, baptized, who their parents are. Um, there's probably hundreds of profiles on Wikitree that I've started in almost the exact same way, which is, I will say, such and such person was a Corleone native resident um, to indicate that they were born in Corleone and they pretty much lived and died there. Uh, but of course, Morello gets to live in New York too, so I start his a little differently. When it comes to somebody's own childhood, there's not there's usually fewer details because they're, they're just generating fewer records to show what they've been doing with themselves as children. Um, but something that I will um, always make sure to include is something like I've got here with Morello, which is the fact that his father died when Giuseppe was young, because that is a major event in his life. It affects who's in his family. It affects what his um, uh, network ties are, what his chances are, what he's going to do with his life is really closely tied to who the, the father figure is in his life. So the fact that Bernardo Terranova steps in as his stepfather um, and is the one who introduces him to the mafia, that's really significant. So, of course, I'm going to include that in his profile. So, um, I have some secondary sources here serving a couple of important functions. Like I said, one of them is that we're establishing in this profile that I'm talking about the same Giuseppe Morello that has been written about in secondary sources because he's an infamous person. He appears on Wikipedia. He's been written about in books. But the other reason that I'm using um, secondary sources is because they do provide biographical details. They add pieces of somebody's story that I don't actually that I don't always find in a vital record. So I'm not just <laughs> I'm not just including them to argue with them and um, to establish that we're talking about the same person. 
but to add details to his, his narrative, his, his biography that I'm going to put here on Wikitree. Um, biography is very strictly chronological, trying not to make it very confusing. Uh, I write it in the present tense. That's a personal matter of taste. It's up to you what tense you're going to write in. I have a problem with kind of falling out of the right verb tense as I'm writing, and so just I'm trying to make it simple, so that's why I do it this way. You don't have to. However, keeping it chronological is a good idea because it helps you to root out discrepancies. You're going to be combining timelines in addition to the timeline that is established by vital records, when they were born, when they were baptized, etc. Um, there's another time, there are other timelines that are in play. Um, what's going on in the world? Um, are they living through war or um, epidemic uh, or a financial crisis? All of these things can contribute valuable context to a person's life. And so I'm looking for other timelines as well as the one of their life. Uh, here's another one of the um, conflicts that I have with Dash here in the New York and Louisiana section. I made a note that Dash claims that Giuseppe lost an infant son in 1894, and another boy was born who's the one that grew up to be the gangster who was killed in New York City. Um, however, Dash doesn't supply any primary sources to support his claim, and um, I haven't found any records that support it either. So my interpretation of the records that I've been able to find uh, of the family's migration and census and burial records is that the boy who was born in um, Corleone in 1892 is the one who died in 1912 in New York, um, not a younger brother born in the United States. Um, it appears, and I'm just guessing here because Dash doesn't actually give any citations in his books, um, or in this book anyway, uh, it looks like he's taking information from the grave marker for um, Cologuro. That's the name of the boy. He was also called Charles, which I find a lot easier to say. I might call him Charles. Um, but it says that he was 17 years old when he died, and um, that would put his birth in November of 1894, which is um, two years later than his baptismal record says. That means after the family immigrated to America. I think that his age was recorded long at his death. And if you want more evidence that the grave marker is not the most reliable source of birth dates, we can look at the other people that he's buried with, his relatives. His uncle Vincenzo's here. He was killed in 1922, right before he turned 37. And it says here that he was 35 when he died. Uh, another uncle, Niccolo, uh, was also killed. And this marker has his correct age, 26, but the date of birth is completely you can kind of see uh, in this image here that um, the year that, of his birth is 1890, um, but uh, it also says that it's the 27th of November, and you can read that part very clearly. However, here's his baptismal record, and I can show you he was born on the 19th of January of that same year. Um, so here's his second marriage, and you can see there's this big gap between the births of Carmela and um, a second son named Calahero, and he did have that other second son, that I don't dispute. Um, but that gap there is because Giuseppe was in prison from 1910 to 1920. Um, and he'd already been in prison for a couple of years when his first son, um, Charlie, died. Um, Calogero is his father's name, is Giuseppe's father's name, um, the one who died young. And uh, so Giuseppe is practicing a very old tradition of naming the first son after his father. And that's, this is exactly how it works in any other family from Sicily that I've seen, where if um, he has a child, a boy, who is named after his father, and that boy dies, um, when he has another boy, he will name the boy with that same name. And I have seen that happen in families, like, many times, in fact. Um, sometimes it's just kind of shocking, even, you know, four or five children, all the same name, because they died young. And in this case... Um, the older child was not even young. He was almost an adult when he was killed. I mean, he was a teenager. Um, but Giuseppe had remarried, so his wife was young enough to have another baby, and they did, and named him um, Calogero as well. Uh, so finally, down here, I have some census records for Giuseppe, starting in 1905. Uh, some of these are what you would call um, a tertiary source, because Morel is just mentioned in them, but he's not really what the books are about. 
Um, and so like this article by Ronald Lawson about Vito DiGiorgio or um, the Valachi papers, um, they, they mention him, they talk about him a little bit, but they're not really about him. And so what those are kind of good for is they establish that he was an important figure. It's not just that um, one or two people decided, oh, I'm going to elevate this gangster and, and, and write a whole book about him and make him seem like he's really important. He is mentioned in other sources. We know that he existed. We know that he was as significant as he's made out to be. Let's open this up into edit mode, and you can see how I do the references and the formatting in a wiki tree profile. So the edit tab is available on any profile that you're allowed to edit, and if it's an old enough profile, then you'll be allowed to edit it if you're um, a wiki tree user. Uh, for newer records, um, you might have to get on somebody's trusted list or be a manager for a profile. Um, but when I'm doing these videos, I'm assuming that you're working with a profile you created yourself, so you are the manager. When you click the edit tab, the profile looks like this. And uh, there's some fields, there's radio buttons up here where you can add information or make changes. Um, but we're working on his biography mostly, which is all down here in this one text box. And it starts um, with category tags. Um, and uh, these are mostly categories that I created, a few of them that I didn't. Uh, in the help menu, there's a whole hierarchy of categories and uh, a search page where you can search for uh, categories if you're looking for ones to put your people in. Um, where they've lived is a good category of categories that to, to add to profiles, uh, professions. Um, a bunch of these you can see are about relationships to mafiosi because that's something that I track. And so some of those categories have my profile ID in them, which lets you know that they're private to me. Uh, I'm Casio 10, the way Giuseppe Morello is Morello 35. That's our unique profile IDs on Wikitree. So you can see up here where the biography starts that there are two equal signs on either side of the word sources, and then another two equal signs around um, biography, and those are the main breakouts of the biography section. There's the place where you're typing in the biography, and then there's the place where the sources are going to appear. And sources can appear one of two ways. You can type them directly down into that section, or you can um, have this references tag here. And what that's going to do is automatically bring in all the inline citations that you put in the biography text. And, then we, and I like to do it by putting the citations right into the text. When you add a citation to the biography text, you're saying this part's true because it says so in this record, um, or in these records that I'm citing right here. And you put each citation um, in its own ref tags. And it looks a lot like HTML. You have an open tag, you have a closed tag. And these uh, two right here don't have names. The main reason I haven't named them is because I don't call them again in this biography, so there's no need to. Uh, I said what I was going to say about those records, but there's other um, sources that I've used, like Dash's book, that I use repeatedly. And so I want to be able to call them again without typing the exact same citation again. So what I do in those cases is I give that ref tag a name. And again, it's just like HTML. You can name a lot of tags in HTML, and you would do it the same way. The close tag looks the same whether uh, you can see what your changes will look like with the preview button. And everything that I've told you about the formatting is pretty much over here in this right column. And then down here is the Save Changes section. You can uh, select a radio button where you describe the changes, or you can type something unique into that into that. Um, change explanation box. Uh, and then save it. Uh, if you're going to keep working on it, you can save draft anytime, but uh, otherwise click full save, commit changes, and that will do a complete save of your work. And that does it. This is, um, you know, how I make a, a bio in Wikitree, and um, it's one of those, your mileage may vary, you should really vary this um, process to suit yourself. So thank you uh, for joining me once again for How to Genealogy, and I will see you next time. Take care.